to put you in the spirit of Christmas, but more than that, to maybe remind us of what Christmas is all about. I do want to greet all of you tonight. Uh, we certainly want to make it as comfortable as possibly, possible for our guests, and um, we are even at this moment putting out some additional chairs to make it convenient for you. I hope you're in a good position, a good location, so that you can uh, benefit from the entire presentation of the program tonight. Let me give you just a word or two of instruction about this evening. Uh, first of all, I hope you've received uh, the, the program so that you can follow along if you so wish. And uh, included in that program are uh, various items of, that might have an interest for you. One would be the fact that the uh, program is being videotaped tonight and can be ordered this evening. And you'll need to place your orders tonight prior to your departure. You can do that. I think arrangements have been made to do that in the foyer. And uh, the application of that is found in your program. Also, let me uh, mention to those of you who may have small children, that is children from birth to age four, the nursery is provided tonight well, uh, well manned and well attended. So uh, you can feel comfortable in placing your child in the nursery. They'll be well, they will be well cared for. You'll receive instruction back there as to what to do and uh, how to respond if there should be a need for you. Uh, and then also, let me mention that we would ask that you not take uh, flash photography as the program is being presented, nor use your own video uh, if, you, if we would appreciate that so much. It could interfere with people around you as well. Thank you for coming tonight. And just sit back and have a wonderful, wonderful evening of watching Christmases across the centuries. I think the Lord will speak to all of us, and let's ask him to do that right now as we bow our heads together and ask for God's blessing and leadership tonight in a word of prayer. Our Father, how thankful we are for that first Christmas when heaven opened and you came as a man. And you presented yourself as a man, as a babe. And Lord, that babe became a testimony of your righteousness, of your holiness. But more important maybe than anything else, that babe became the ultimate substitute for our sins. And Lord, I pray that the spirit of Christmas, the reality of what the Christmas season is all about, might be penetrating and powerful as it's expressed tonight in this drama presentation. Be with those who are participating and be with those of us who are observing. And may we enter into these next uh, few moments together and enjoy and be moved by what you have for us tonight. Speak to each heart, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
king of sugar plums and candy canes. Warm embraces as we get by the fire. Christmas carols and go from the Square again. Carolers singing. He saw the goodwill to Shoppers hurrying, looking for a special toy. Mary. Stop! Oh, I'm sorry, not you. Wait! What? This is as far as I go. Do you need me to take some files? Yes, thank you. Come along, we have work to do. This is as far as I go. My mother and daughter will be here soon. But we have work to do. Monday's going to be here before we know it. Bill, it's Christmas Eve. No more work. Not tonight. I'm all night. I need your help. I just can't do this work alone. Mary, what's the matter? Aren't we paying you enough as a consultant or what? I need your help. Look, we're almost to my apartment. Just a few more minutes. Come on, please. Bill, I can't work tonight. My daughter's in the Christmas play. She's an angel, you know. One minute, Mary. One. Just one minute is all I ask. I promise you. I'd, I'd cross my heart, but I can't. That's what you said at Thanksgiving. And as a matter of fact, you're not paying me enough. Not for hours like this. Not hours, Mary. Minutes. Just one minute. Come on. Please. Please. Oh, OK. One minute. Yes. Come on. Bill, you're such a workaholic. Would you just stop for a minute? Look around. Look at all these people getting ready for Christmas. Look at their faces. Everyone is so happy. Bill, but, would you just pause for a second? I, the accounts won't fall apart if you just look around for a minute. <sighs> would you look? Oh, all right. Satisfied? Let's go. I can't. I have to. Mommy! Oh, there you are. Hi, Sugar Plum. Have you been shopping? Yeah, but you can't look. We bought you a surprise robe. <laughs> Hush, big mouth. She's been pulling me all over town. Uh, oh, Mother, um, this is Bill from the firm. Hi. Yes, I've heard a lot about you. None of it's true. My thoughts, exactly. <laughs> oh, and do you know Jenny? Hey, yes, I remember her from the picture you showed me. She's a lot cuter in person. <laughs> uh, oh, Mom, would you mind taking Jenny home? I have a couple of quick things I need to do. But, Mary, the pageant, and your singing tonight. And I gotta be at well, you're already an angel. Well, it, it won't take long. I'll, I'll just have be one quick minute. Well, hurry, all right? Come on, Jenny. I think they like me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure they do. Come on, we got lots to do, and I want to get the most out of this minute. Oh, look! Carolers collecting money for orphans. Maybe they'll sing. Maybe they will. My apartment's right around the corner. We'll be able to hear them great from up there. Come on. No, maybe they'll sing if I put some money in the pot. Maybe they'll come up to the apartment if I give them a credit card. Mary, please. But, no, here we go. Now, I only want to hear a little bit. All right, but this is your minute, not mine. These statistics are just not working out. I don't understand it. There's something wrong here. Bill, your minute has become 20. Oh, come on, Mary. Look, this is the last one. Please, come on. Help me out here. Look at this. Oh, let me see. I don't get it. Looks fine to me. No, no, no. Look, look. Look, you see the figure at the bottom of this column? All right. Now, match it to this. You see? It's not working out. I don't understand what we've done wrong. Oh, I'm beginning to go cross-eyed. All these numbers are running together, Bill. I really have got to go. Mary, look, just one more one minute. One more right, that's what you said. I can't do it, Bill. I've got to pick up Jennifer at my mother's, and I have to get her ready for the service tonight at our church. I'm singing tonight, you know. D did we ever get the results of that analysis report last month? I don't know, but they... Bill, I have got to get going. I can't be late for the service tonight. It means a lot to Jenny. Mary, I've got to get this done. You know what they say about time and budget meetings? They wait for no one. Does, um, does Bob ever come over for Christmas? No. Um, we haven't heard from him since the divorce was finalized. He'll send a gift, probably make an obligatory call. <laughs> That's real sporting of him. Now... You know what? I bet if we go back through the I receipts... I hate and, to leave you like this. Then stay. Uh, I don't hate it that much. Um, would you like to come to the service tonight with me? Uh, me and Jenny? No, thanks. I gotta stay here and keep plowing on. Bill, it's Christmas Eve. Huh? It's Christmas Eve. Yes, it is. But your apartment, there's nothing here. Uh, well, I really haven't had any time to do anything with it. I, I got a Bing Crosby album on the turntable. He does White Christmas. That's all? No, he does lots of other Christmas songs, too. I mean, that's all you have to commemorate Christmas? Well, you know how busy we've been at the office. I mean, I, 
You know, if we could find that Davis report, I know we could but figure out. But that can't out. be all. I mean, you go to your family's house, right? You go to your brothers, the sisters, some relative? No, no, no. What you're looking at is the last of a dying species. My father left us when I was just a child. He left on Christmas Day, in fact. No, you, you look up the term dysfunctional in the dictionary, you'll see our family portrait right next to it. Yep, since that day, it's been just me and Bing, and sometimes Nat King Cole, if I can ever remember where I put his tape. I... But that's no way to spend Christmas, Phil, alone. It's ideal. It's the only time I can get anything done. Nobody calls, nobody comes by. It's paradise. But what about the Christmas spirit, the celebration of the birth of Christ? I'll watch Mr. Magoo's A Christmas Carol. That ought to do just fine. Now, where is that, that Philadelphia study that was done? But, we, Bill, you don't, I, you don't have any gifts. You don't even have a tree or anything like that. Christmas is a time for love, to be with people, and, and to share love and faith. Look. I joined an environmentalist group. We're trying to stop, stamp out, the wholesale slaughter of innocent Christmas trees. It's a nonprofit organization. It's, uh, you know, we go to rallies and stuff, and <laughs> Mary, I'm fine, really. It's better this way. But I still think that you should spend time with people. You need, you need sh to share love and faith. And it's all wrong, Bill. It's just all wrong. What makes you act this way? How could you be so insensitive? It's almost Christmas Day. No time for love. No time. If, look, if, if you're not going to help anymore, then you, you really better get going. Look, don't worry about me. I'm fine. But you just go on home, drink some eggnog with Jenny, open some presents, and forget about me. I'm okay. But no, I, I won't take no for an answer. Come on. If you don't hurry along, Santa is not going to bring you any toys. Oh, sometimes you drive me crazy. Such is the essence of our relationship. Well, call me if you change your mind about dinner. It's an open invitation. Sure. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. No time for love. 
no time for Christmas. It's a busy Christmas Eve, and I hardly can believe how the time does fly and the work stacked high, and she says she has to leave. It's a busy Christmas Eve, and there's so much to achieve, and I should have known I'd be on my own on this very busy Christmas Eve. My boss's face is gazing at the ticking clock. In this rat race, there's no time for a mental block. Pressure's building, gotta meet the day's deadlines. I am late and running out of time. It's a busy Christmas Eve, and I hardly can believe how the time does fly and the work stacked high. How much worse could this day be? It's a busy Christmas Eve, and there's so much to achieve. And I should have known I'd be on my own. It's a very busy Christmas Eve. Oh, I should have known I'd be on my own. Mary, maybe I'll rewrap it and give it to her tomorrow. Oh, I should have known I'd be on my own. It's a very busy Christmas. I bet you're the cause of all this. William! William, it's time to wake up. Okay, Dad, I'll get up for school in just a minute. Oh, please. William? Oh, what? Bill! idea of screaming like that. You nearly scared me to death. Well, it didn't do much for me either. I mean, who are you? What are you doing here? I'm just visiting. W will you stand still, please? You're making me dizzy. Don't mess with me, Buster. <laughs> I know karate. Ha! You only had two lessons and one was with your mum. How did you know that? Oh, I know a lot of things two sugars in your coffee, and you cheated the IRS. Shh. Anything else? Two more sugars in your coffee. Color in your hair. Oh. You act so very macho, but sleep with a teddy bear. <laughs> Don't you mock my Mr. Bear. Now let me ask you, how many years? Seven. Till... And what's my favorite? Red. You don't know I like Dad. It's like he knows what's in my head. I also know that apart from a puppy named Rascal, you have never loved or been in love, at least not with anyone else other than yourself. Symptomatic of a closed heart, I think. Now, wait just a minute. Bill, I'm here to teach you. Teach me? About what? Breaking and entering? I'm not a burglar. You have a lesson to learn tonight about Christmas. A great lesson. You're going to take a journey and meet some of my friends. <laughs> I know what you're up to. Those clowns at the office put you up to this. That Mary, she is such a prankster. This is not a prank. You've been growing colder and colder towards Christmas, ignoring it. Denying the spirit that desires to grow within you. We fear for your heart. Oh, and who are you, the ghost of Christmas past? You've got the wrong apartment, pal. Scrooge is in 3B. You're not taking this very seriously. In a word, no. You're either a nut 
a burglar, a prank, or I'm dreaming. I told you, I'm not a nut, a burglar, and this isn't a prank. And that's it. I'm dreaming. I knew it. The pressure at the office is finally getting to me. Oh, what? Hey, what is this all about? It's not New Year's Eve. This will help you on the journey. Journey? We're going somewhere? Well, of course. We're certainly not staying here. Oh, look, this has got to be a dream. What, what are you trying to prove? I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm going to teach you about Christmas, the spirit and the celebration. All right, look, what did you say your name was? I didn't say, but you can call me Bartholomew. Okay, Bart, listen. None of this is necessary. I love Christmas. It's a wonderful time of the year. But you don't celebrate it. What? Don't celebrate it? I don't celebrate it? I wear a Santa Claus tie. Look, I've got weak old eggnog in the refrigerator. All right, okay, so maybe I'm not into the, the tra traditional, uh, all the blatant commercialization of Christmas. I mean, it's all symbolic, right? Mm. I mean, the tr traditional, ornamental Christmas kind of... I mean, just because I don't display all the exterior trappings of Christmas paraphernalia doesn't mean I don't celebrate it inside, uh, in my heart. It's the heart that counts, right? Exactly. And it's your heart we're going to deal with. Wrong. By showing you the friends, some other friends that have celebrated Christmas in years past. Wrong. Look. I got work to do. I am very busy. Oh, boy. I've read about things like this. I got to somehow wake myself out of this. I'm just going to sit down in my chair. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to take a deep breath. And I'm going to wake myself out of this silly dream. And when I wake up, if you're still here, I'm calling the cops. Okay. Oh, if you want to do this the hard way, one. Two, three. <laughs> I'm awake. I knew it was a dream. Bartholomew, teach me about Christmas. How stupid. Oh, boy, it sure is dark in here. Oh, I hope we haven't had another power outage. Whoa. Not the normal sound of a normal apartment. Phew, I gotta talk to the landlord. I know we got a no animal clause in our contract. Caleb, Benjamin, come quickly. Look, blessed Lord God, look. Hey, hey guys, hey guys, guys what, guys get up, talk to me, look at me. What are you, some kind of a new street gang or something? Look, I have nothing worth stealing. All right, I got a Bing Crosby album. That's all I got. You can have it. Guys, guys, what's going on here? Look at me.
this thing which has come to pass that the Lord has made known unto us. Uh, uh, not, not, not so fast. Pretty impressive, huh? Oh, I'll say. Overwhelming. Especially those sheep. Whew. You just witnessed the announcement of the birth of the Christ child. You, my foolish friend, got to see the very first Christmas celebration. And all you could think about was sheep? Is that all you received from the whole experience? What do you want me to get out of this? It's just a dream. I'm not going to remember any of this anyway when I wake up. You'll remember or forget to your own demise. You're being shown these things to give you an understanding of the Christmas spirit. Those shepherds felt it first, deep within their hearts, in response to the birth of the Son of God. It was there that the Christmas spirit planted its first seeds for the celebration to blossom. But Christmas, as you know it, would need nurturing. It went through many changes, suffering at the hands of pagans and churchmen alike. Both would call it a holy day and a holiday. But at the heart of it, always at the heart, the spirit remained constant to the true believers, not only on the 25th of December, but throughout the year. Look, Bart, none of this is necessary. I've seen a Christmas carol. I know all this stuff. You don't have to buy But I do. Your attitude compels me to. Come, there is more to learn. Stuffed pike, jelly, roast porpoise, boar, smelt, crayfish. Ah, what's this? <laughs> A bowl of wassail. What's wrong, Bill? Never seen a Christmas like this before? <laughs> sure I have. We did it like this when I was a kid every year. Then you must have been a long, born a long time ago. Your modern age knows nothing of celebrating Christmas like this. Well, I'm not impressed. They don't have a Christmas tree either. Christmas trees as you know them haven't caught on yet. That's no excuse. Well, what do you expect? One of those plastic trees with electric lights and uh, aluminum icicles and that revolving star at the top? Department stores haven't been invented yet. What? Christmas without department stores? Now that's blasphemous. Just watch. With the activities surrounding here tonight, they wouldn't have had time for such nonsense. The Lord of the house returns from the hunt. A hunt? This is not Easter. Many of the nobles would go boar hunting on Christmas morn after the Christmas worship. Cut the wisecracks and watch. Look, look, aren't they going to be a little upset when they return and find we've been wandering around their house all afternoon? They can't see us. Come in, come in. The table is spread and the festivities are about to begin. Oh, no, we'll sing, we know, we'll hear the angels sing. 
Noel sing, we know well, glad tidings now we bring. Noel sing, we know well, and hear ye what we say. Noel sing, we know well, on this Christmas day. A child of the sky is born, a child of high renown. This wedding of the sacrament, a sceptre and a crown. Oh, no. To whom the angels spoke, oh, be ye not afraid. Be glad for blessed shepherds, and do not be dismayed. Oh, no, sing me now, and we'll hear the angels sing. No, sing me now, and the tidings shall be free. No, sing me now, and we'll hear the what we say. No, sing me now, and on this Christmas day. To the courtyards, it's time for the tournaments. <laughs> tournaments, jousting, spear throwing, races. A public test of valor and honor on the part of the knights. It too was part of the grandeur of Christmas. Never again would Christmas be celebrated like this. Such zest, such spirit. Well, come on, let's go. Let's no, go see the... No, 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 no. We have no time here. I want to see the tournaments. Come on, let's go s No, there's too much for us to do. Come. Spoil sport. Oh, now you want to get involved, do you? What about the pile of accounts on the table over there? I thought it was so urgent to get back to them. Well, it is. I, d I just... <laughs> All right. Wake me up. Take me home. Get me out of this. I've had enough celebrating. Look, I don't even live in the Middle Ages. I don't want to live in the Middle Ages. Okay, so maybe they knew how to throw a great big Christmas bash. But from what I hear, the rest of the time, the Middle Ages was nothing special. Nor would I say that it was. Every age had its problems and its tragedy. But for one day out of the year, can't we glance beyond our temporal mortal lives and look to the one who died that we might have eternal life? That's something you've forgotten, Bill.
of Bart, now what's happening? Why is it so dark? Because Christmas went dark. Huh? As time went on, the festivities got out of hand. Many forgot what they were celebrating. Remembrance of the birth of Christ got swallowed up by excessiveness. People used Christmas as an excuse for the wrong things. There were indulgences of all kinds, even riots. That <laughs> sounds like one of our office parties. It became a mockery of what it was supposed to be. Church leaders grew intolerant of it, and in the enthusiasm of their good intentions, they almost destroyed the season altogether. Watch. But, but I thought you said the season was almost destroyed. These people seem quite calm. Watch. But Shh. thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathra, though thou be little among the thousands, yet out of thee shall he come forth to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that which she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brother shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. Charles Stewart. What? Not only for Charles Stewart, but for all kings, princes, and governors. Then in doing so, you pray for the king of Spain as well, who is our enemy. You pray treason. This is not true. Hush, daughter. Then speak the truth. This is not merely a prayer service, but it is a service for Christmas and a sacrilege as well. This is not a sacrilege. We are giving thanks for the birth of his son. Why, contrary to the ordinance made, do you observe such a superstitious time as a nativity? It is a pagan holiday, and therefore, it is the birth of our Savior, and to be honored. You will stop this ignorant ceremony and go your separate ways. I will not. Then we defy you to continue. I will read scripture. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the Stop. word was God. You forced me to take the action. The same was in the beginning with God. We cannot tolerate this sacrilege. And all things were Cease. made by him. And I order you him, in the name of the law. There was not anything made that was made. Stop. Stop. Oh, hey. No. Who said that? Who spoke? I did. You can't do this. It's wrong. They can't hear you. 
Who spoke? Tell me! Uh, I don't know. It came from back there. It came from nowhere. They heard me shout. I thought you said they can't hear me. Yes. That's strange. I don't know about that. That never happened before. <laughs> Bring them to the prison. <laughs> we will discuss this now. <laughs> This is the work of demons. Demons? Huh! He's got a lot of nerve. What, what will happen to, Mary, uh, the, to them? Fortunately, they'll only be fined this time. I don't understand it. They weren't rioting. There was no civil commotion. They weren't creating a problem. They were just having a little service. The innocent suffer with the guilty. Christmas ought outlawed for all. It was to become a season like any other season, a day like any other day. Uh, well, well, what happens next? I mean, Christmas didn't stay outlawed. As is true of so many edicts and ordinances of men, the Christmas spirit lived on in spite of them. Powers changed, the government came and went, and the desire for Christmas returned. The Christmas tree, as you know it, began to catch on and was set in the middle of a table covered with garland and greenery. There were small homemade toys, ornaments, sometimes fruit, even gingerbread, and always with candles. There was everything and more. Everybody left themselves to complete abandonment, to mirth and good fellowship. They brought together both peasant and lord, blending all ranks in one generous flow of joy and kindness. Just imagine the crackling fire, the carol sung, the holly and the mistletoe, the goose and the Christmas pudding. <laughs> All right, okay, you make it sound so good. I mean, but, but where is this? It sounds like some place out of Dickens. You're close. Oh, and I suppose Scrooge is going to be showing up any minute. Scrooge was fictional, but this is not. Yet, ironically, it is good that Scrooge did show up. His fictional conversion helped rekindle the spirit in his time. In an age of industrial revolution and technological change, Scrooge helped remind the people that they should celebrate and it takes a changed heart to do it properly. Dickens made that very clear in his Christmas Carol and a changed heart can overcome anything, even poverty.
in my heart real could it be true good morning time to get up good morning wake up you sleepy heads good morning children good morning mr and a merry christmas to you all it is christmas you know why so many gloomy faces? We should be making merry. Yes, ma'am, we know it's Christmas, but... But what, Jane? Speak up, girl. What she means, ma'am, is what do we have to make merry? Oh, ho, Gwendolyn, now that's a good question. But I'll tell you what we don't need to make us merry. To celebrate the occasion, I've decided to spend all work for the day. Yay! You mean, ma'am, no chores? No chores, Jonathan. You mean, ma'am, no schoolwork? That's right, Edgar. Even arithmetic, ma'am? Even arithmetic, Sarah. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Arith arithmetic gives me an A. <laughs> we <laughs> will make it a day to celebrate. First, we'll have breakfast. And then a small worship service to wish our Lord a most happy birthday. And then sledding! Yay! Can we do it after breakfast when we will? When we have no food for breakfast. Oh, Gwenny, you're such a sourpuss. Now, now, children, we must have faith. Can't eat no faith, ma'am. God has provided for us till now. He will continue to do so, I am most sure. Yeah, I suppose that's why I made us all orphans, to celebrate Christmas like this. Now, David, I will not have such talk. Not on this day of all days. You could be in the mines or factories. I, I was living on the streets, but for Mistress Lewis finding me. Yes, we have to think for what we do have. That's right. Our faith should be strong regardless of our situation. Come, children. Let's sing a song for Christmas morning. Perhaps if we sing a song of praise loud and heartily, the Lord will be so impressed that he can't help but send us breakfast, knowing that we will eat to his glory and spend the day celebrating his generosity, eh? With a little bit of faith, we can do it. With a little bit of hope, come what may. And no matter what the test will make it through it, it's not hard to see the answers on its way. With a little bit of faith, we can do it. That's better with a little bit of hope. I think she's got it. And no matter what the test will make it through it. Tell me why. It's not hard to see the answers on its way. Of candy, 
I guess we'll get hungry this Christmas. Come on. With a little bit of faith, we can do it. Sing it with me. With a little bit of hope, come on, faith. And no matter what the devil may do, it's not hard to be the answer. Merry Christmas! Hey! <laughs> oh, here we go. How about that? Hey. Messenger from God Himself. It would have been a frightfully okay. dismal Christmas if He hadn't sent okay. you. Oh, we're glad to be of service. You have helped make this holiday so special for the children and for me as well. Thank you, Father Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. No, wrong character. You have helped make the children so happy. They are often forgotten at times of year such as this. Won't you stay for breakfast? No, we must be running along. We have Mrs. a great Lewis. journey to take. Mrs. Lewis, come quick. David hit Robert in the head with his toy soldier. Oh, no, that won't do for Christmas morning. Ta-ta, Merry Christmas. Ta-ta, bye-bye. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Did you see the looks on their faces when we came in the room? Yes, I did. <laughs> They really thought I was Father Christmas. <laughs> that was great. <sighs> Something wrong? Yeah, you know, there were these carolers singing for, they were collecting for orphans. I should have given them something. I don't know why I didn't. Follow me. We have one more stop. Except for a few modifications, the way they celebrated Christmas in the 20th century wasn't that far different from the Victorian Christmas.
So, 
Now you've seen Christmas at its best and at its worst. Did you learn anything? Well, yes. Yes, I, I did learn some. I learned that Christmas was outlawed once. I didn't know that before. What? That's all you've learned? I'm just kidding. Boy, some people can't take a joke. Well, tell me, what did you learn from your heart? Tell me what Christmas really means to you. All right. Okay, all right. The, well, okay. It all started. There were these shepherds, and they were worshiping. Let's see, there was Richard and Wassel and... Bah! I've done all I can. Well, Bart, what do you want from me? You, what promises do you want me to make? You want me to promise to trim a Christmas tree every year? Bart, what? what? What do you want me to do? You want me to promise to exchange gifts? How about kiss under the mistletoe? Bart, what do you want from me? You want me to promise to sing with the carolers every year at the church? Bart, what promises do you want me to make? Those are mere appearances, Bill. I expect no promises from you. In fact, I don't expect anything from you. I believe you when you say that you will wake up and forget all of this. It wouldn't be practical or advantageous to your career, remembering all that you've witnessed here tonight. No, sir, I've done all I can. In all the years of my existence, I have seen the Christmas spirit survive many things. It has overcome tragedy, poverty, persecution, and even attempts to stop it. But the one thing it cannot overcome is a cold and indifferent heart, a heart that won't stay open to that child in the manger. That's what will kill Christmas. You think you're religious, and I believe you, more's the pity. There is nothing sadder than a heart that won't stay open. It that thinks it knows Christ but won't respond to him. You just don't know how much you're missing. I'm done with you. Go back to work. I warn you, young man, the great tragedy of today's Christmas is loneliness a loneliness of the heart and of the soul. Many people will be lonely and alone this Christmas. It's not by choice. You choose it now. One day it will be too late. It's my life. As long as it doesn't affect anybody else, it should matter only to me. I didn't ask you to do all this. Oh, it's just a dream anyway. I just got to wake myself out of this. Oh, going back to my chair. Oh, oh no. Bart! Bart! You dropped me off at the wrong apartment! <laughs> Bart! Are you trying to get me arrested? Bartholomew! Oh, terrific! Jenny, we're home. Uh, <laughs> Mary! Jenny. I can I can explain. She's still asleep. I guess no. I guess I'm still invisible. <laughs> oh, I can't believe she fell asleep at the service. <laughs> Must have been the excitement of being an angel. Yes. And wasn't it a beautiful service? Oh, my, when you sang Oh, Holy Night and we lit the candles, it was just beautiful. Oh, I don't think it ever looked more beautiful. <coughs> Would, I really appreciate you taking us. Oh, yes. Uh, Would you like some tea or something? Oh, no, I've got to be going. Your father's waiting for me in the car. Um, you want us to come over in the morning? Oh, yes, first thing. Jenny will want to open her gifts. And, uh, dinner, you're still... Want to eat here? Yes, Mother. I still know how to cook a turkey. And besides, 
I've invited um, a friend. Bill. Yes, Mother, Bill. Oh, Mary, I don't understand you. Why, he's, he doesn't even give you a second look only when he needs you to help him with those reports or something. He's so engrossed in his work, I wager he won't even think about your dinner invitation. Mary, I don't know him, but, but I know his type. He, his work is everything. His heart is full of ambition, nothing else. I don't believe that, Mother. Oh, Mary. I know how hard it's been on you ever since Bob left. And, and Christmases are, are so hard. It's funny how the most joyous times of year sometimes are the loneliest. Mary, you just do what you think is best. I will, Mom. Good night. Good Merry night. Christmas. Bart. Bart. What are you trying to do? Oh, hi, honey. Did our talking wake you up? I thought Santa Claus was here. Oh, no, honey. Santa won't come until he's absolutely sure you're asleep. So why don't you go to bed so you don't make him late? Mommy, is Daddy going to be home for Christmas? No, honey. He's gone out of town, and, and he won't be making it this year. But if you go to bed real soon, maybe Santa will bring you some gifts special from him. Why can't he bring them himself? Because, well, he's, he's just out of town, and he won't make it back in time. Now, why don't you go to bed, okay? Oh, I guess he doesn't love us anymore. Oh, no, honey. He loves you very much. No, no more questions, okay? Go to bed. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mom. Good night, hon. for you anymore. Let's see. Tab A and into tab B and slot A and this slot B and this hinge connects. No, I won't cry. God don't let me cry. Father, be my strength. I refuse to spend another Christmas in self-pity. Shattered dreams, empty promises, and a life into silent cries, painful memories, just trying to make it through. Is there something beneath the tree that tells me where to start? Looking for a miracle to heal a wounded heart, a gift of hope, a touch of heaven. Is there some place that I to take my broken 
Christmas is a time to look at Christ and what he's done for me, not to focus on myself and my own petty problems. Oh, look at me now. I'm talking to myself. Bill, this was all your fault. It was just a simple dinner invitation. That's what I get for opening up my heart again. Bart. Bart. Come on, Bart. I know you're around here somewhere. Bart, let her hear me. Let her see me. I want to do something. I want to help out. Bart, please. Please, Bart. Bart, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. Mary, I don't know him, but I know his type. His heart is full of ambition, nothing else. This isn't a prank, Bill. You've been growing colder and colder towards Christmas, ignoring it, denying the spirit that desires to grow within you. We fear for your heart. You have never loved or been in love. Symptomatic of a closed heart, I think. Let us now go to Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass, that the Lord has made known unto us. A child this day is born, a child of high renown, most worthy of a scepter, a scepter and a crown. Come in, come in, the table is spread and the festivities are about to begin. This is not a sacrilege, it is the birth of our Savior and to be honored. Our faith should be strong regardless of our situation. Perhaps if we sing a song of praise loud and heartily, the Lord will be so impressed that he can't help but send us breakfast, knowing that we will eat to his glory and spend the day celebrating his generosity, eh? In all the years of my existence, I have seen the Christmas spirit survive many things. It has overcome tragedy, poverty, persecution, even attempts to stop it. But the one thing it cannot overcome is a cold, indifferent heart, a heart that does not stay open to the Son of God. That's what will kill Christmas. You think you're religious, and I believe you, more's the pity. There's nothing sadder than a heart that doesn't respond to the Son of God. You don't know what you're missing. Just a minute. Who in the world a Christmas morning this time? Oh. I'll be right there. Um, Mary! Hi, Bill. Did I wake you? Um, no. I mean, yeah. I mean, it didn't matter. I had to answer the door. Why? What are... I know this is forward of me. But I just can't let you do this. And I know we discussed it last night, but I'm not going to let you do this. Okay. You're spending Christmas with me and my family. Okay. Don't even try to argue with me about it because... Uh, okay. Okay. But... Well, Mary, I need to tell you something. Mary, I've been so blind. I... I get so caught up in things, my own life, my own goals. I, sometimes I can't see past the nose on my face. I, 
I thought I could ignore the spirit of Christmas, but, but in my heart now, I, I know I can't. I'm not making any sense, am I? No. <laughs> Mary, what, what I'm trying to say, what I want to is yes, I, I will have Christmas dinner with you today. But what about all your work? I mean, all those reports that are due. Forget about them. It's Christmas. They'll wait. You know what your problem is? You don't know how to stop and enjoy the holiday. It's all work to you. Busy, busy, busy. You, you know, maybe I could help you out with your situation, too. My situation? Yeah, you know with Jenny and, and her dad and he can't come for Christmas and all. Maybe... Yeah. Ma didn't you say your father left you at Christmas? Yeah, I mean, maybe I could help her understand, and, and, uh, and, and maybe you could help me too. Oh, help you? Yeah. You see, maybe you could help me to know more about... Well, Mary, I've always considered myself a Christian. I mean, I went to Sunday school once. I give to some charities. But... It's never really made any difference, not on the inside. And what you have does, and maybe you could help me to understand the spirit of Christmas better. I think you mean the spirit of Christ. M maybe I do. You see, Bill, the person whose birth we're celebrating this Christmas came to be your friend. Just come to dinner and we'll talk about it. Okay. Oh, listen, Bill. Hey, I hear it. It sounds like Christmas is waking up. Yeah. Well, we better get going. I've got to get that turkey in the oven. <laughs> All right. Hey, and I think I could probably help you get that dollhouse together, too. <laughs> yeah, I only finished half... How did you know about that dollhouse? Did I tell you? Uh, you must have. Yes, you must have. How else would I know? Merry Christmas. Let's In go. all of history, there's no better Christmas than the one you celebrate now. If you celebrate with a heart open to the Christ of Bethlehem. Merry Christmas! Mm -hmm. 